The internal family systems model of therapy has been really impactful for many people around the world and personally for myself as well as for my clients. It is a system that helps to heal the many parts within us that interfere with being able to live from true self and align with our highest purpose and joy and freedom in this life. In this video, I will be sharing my art therapy approach to internal family systems, which I call parts cards. This is a system that I developed in response to the powerful dynamic of internal family systems and basically the understanding that we have a multiplicity of our mind and soul that develop as we age through our lives and as we experience different hardships and painful traumatic experiences experiences and relationships and we factor off into protector parts and exile parts that protect our true self from feeling the pain that it felt during those difficult experiences. I'm not going to go into a deep explanation of internal family systems, so if you already don't have a background on IFS, please go back and watch my introductory videos so that you understand what I'm talking about here. This video today is by popular demand that people have asked to see my own personal collection of parts cards. So I will be sharing 10 of my favorite parts cards and I will share both the visual image as well as the written description of each part. There is no limit to the amount of parts cards you can create or the amount of parts that you can explore and develop within yourself. To give you an example of this, this is a stack of all the parts cards that I have created over time. It's taken me several years to identify and create all of these, so be patient with yourself and hold a perspective of curiosity as you explore your parts work. Now you can identify parts from an archetypal perspective, similar to Jung's archetypes. You can think of it as the characters of a movie, how there's a hero, a villain, a victim. Um, sometimes there's a wise person or a, a wounded child. A lot of these are archetypes that also are parts. And as we'll explore with my parts, sometimes parts can be um, entities or experiences in your life. So there's a lot of different ways of exploring and experimenting with your parts artistically once you identify them and there's really no right or wrong way so I invite you to take off any pressure you feel to do this right. That's probably your perfectionist part getting in the way of exploring your journey authentically. So I notice within myself when a part comes up, if I'm feeling a strong charge or emotional reaction to something, that is an experience that is not self. So I can ask myself which part of me is feeling this charge right now, and that will help me identify what part has moved forward and flooded my system with, with its energy so that I can then work with that part, understand why it has shown up, and reintegrate it back into the system. Now, as promised, by popular demand, I have 10 of my own parts cards here today to explore and develop with you. I want to give you a good sense of how parts cards works, and then you can kind of take it from there in your own creative process. So the first part that I'd like to explore with you is the loving mother. Now this is a part within all of us, even if we didn't have a loving mother in our physical life. Deep within all of us, there is that loving presence. And so the loving mother has the energetics on the front of the card that express that sense of love, connection, the colors, the shapes, the designs that all feel like nurturance. On the back of my parts cards, I always write a description, and it can be either first person or third person, but I describe the part as though it were a character all on its own. Here's my description of the loving mother. My sweet, my darling, you are the light of my life, and I so totally adore you. When they say having a child means forevermore having your heart walk around outside your body, they're not kidding. My love for you is deep and eternal. 
I watch with glimmering eyes as you come into yourself and navigate your world. You are quite a miracle, and it is my honor and pleasure to extend every ounce of my love to you, raise you up, soothe you, steadfastly defend you, even with my own life if necessary. My love is unconditional. There is nothing you could ever do to alter my love for you. You are a gift in my life, in the lives of everyone who knows you. You are a gift to this world and even beyond it. I am proud of you, absolutely amazed by you. Being your mother is a sacred treasure, and I see your shadow and your light, your gifts and your challenges. With me, you are both held and free. If you need me, I will drop anything and come to you. My heart to your heart. There is no other love like a mother's love. Now the next part that we will be talking about today is an archetype that is one of the survival basic archetypes in Jungian psychology, and it is the prostitute. Now this is not necessarily the prostitute you have in mind, where, you know, the sex worker on the street. The prostitute is how we self-abandon, how we give ourselves away, our time, our energy, our love, our effort for less than we're worth. And when we give something away that we don't really want to give. So you can notice with this card that it looks arduous. The colors are maybe sexual, feminine, a little bit masculine in the kind of wheeling and dealing sense. So use whatever it feels like in your imagery, whatever feels like it carries the resonance, the color, the shape, and the energetics of the part. I'll read to you now the prostitute. They pay her for the services she offers. Isn't that enough? She slices her soul into neat decorative treats and dishes, and she serves these out in plentiful multitudes, as if the morsels could actually satiate the recipient for longer than the rapid beat of a hummingbird's wings. There is a dirty feeling inside, hid beneath jewel-toned layers of social messages societal conditioning that teaches she must give away valuable parts of herself to earn belonging, to keep it. She has become her own pimp, and the trust in this inner dynamic balances on the tip of a needle, always close to falling into nothingness if she should redesign her participation, her cost, her worth. And while she dawdles away time, wondering how to preserve her dignity and precious energy, they keep knocking at her door, addicts searching for their next hit of her magical soul. I know that might sound really intense, and sometimes parts are. I want you to notice that in that writing, I used third person where I was talking about the prostitute as someone outside of myself, whereas when I talked about the loving mother, I was using first person as though I were that part. It's okay to interchange and exchange all of these and get into as much detail as you want with the characters. This is your process, so please don't feel like you have to adhere to any rules. All right, so the next one I'm going to talk about is called Cocoon. This is a part that is not necessarily archetypal. It's a part of me and perhaps part of you as well where I like to go when I feel like I need nourishment, soothing, and rejuvenation. As an introvert, my cocoon is really important to me because it's kind of like my solace and my retreat place. So I created this card with the softness of sort of feathers and these warm pastel colors because when I visualize my cocoon, this is how it feels. So now I'll read you the description for cocoon. I am your haven, your safe, cozy nest. It is my job and my joy to cradle you in my soft, feathery warmth. In my embrace, you can rest and revitalize and no one can hurt you. There is no need for walls with me. You need no facade. Come into my arms exactly as you are in whatever state you're in and I will hold you. With me, there is no pressure to stay or expiration date by which you must leave. You decide how long you need in my soft embrace. When not holding you, I stand behind you, 
regal and strong, holding space and standing by. I am a reminder of your true nature. With me, you are both held and free. I am always with you. Now you may notice that this feels a little bit like the loving mother, right? They even said, you are both held and free with me. So it's important to understand that parts can overlap, they can be similar to each other, and they can even work together. So when you're playing with your parts cards and lining them up or dialoguing with them, you may notice that some of them work together to protect you, to keep you safe, and to support you in your life. Next, we're going to talk about the judge. This is one that's strong in me in the Myers-Briggs uh, personality inventory. I'm an INFJ and J stands for judge. So um, maybe you relate to this as well. As you notice with this card, I use black and white because the judge is very clear, very binary on right and wrong black and white, good and bad, and used to making judgment calls. So I use straight lines and these black and white colors to depict that. You'll also notice here that this image was not made from magazine cutouts. So you don't have to limit yourself to the imagery of magazines. You can use paper like I did here, or you can even use your own artistic designs through painting, drawing, or even fabric design on these cards. There is really no limit. All right, so now I'll read you the judge. The judge prides himself on his decision-making abilities. He has an impeccable sense of right and wrong, and he could find true north with his eyes closed. Growing up in a family with eight children fostered a sense of chaos and disorganization that often left him in the pickle of having a pair of socks that didn't match in color or size. When he was old enough to move out and get a job, the judge committed himself to a life of organization and clarity. One by one, he removed the color from his life and then set to work on each shade of gray. Now the judge takes solace in his black and white world, always finding that the world can be divided and understood. Each pair of socks is properly matched when black and white are the only colors. The judge sometimes visits with his siblings who cannot seem to find anything to talk to him about. Friendships are much the same, mostly ending quickly after they begin. The judge is content in his world, pleased with the ease of compartmentalization. Now you'll notice here that I'm shifting gender. So the judge has a masculine male perspective. The loving mother had a female perspective. Cocoon was kind of non-binary. So you can really play with different gender identities and fluidities with all of these parts cards. That's part of the fun. And also, as I was talking about the judge and the eight siblings, I don't have eight siblings. This isn't my story. This is the personification of this part and how I imagine this part to be in the world. So you can get really creative and imaginative with the way that you explore and express your parts. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about Lady Death. This may sound like kind of a scary name, but the way that I experience Lady Death as a part of me is this part comes online when I know there's an ending that needs to happen and when I am in resonance with the cycle of life and of all things. So with my imagery, I expressed that with kind of a wise woman, with the hibernation of snow and winter and endings. Now I'll read Lady Death. Don't be afraid of her. Lady Death is not evil. She is as necessary as the air you breathe a crucial part of the celestial gravity within every living cell. Even the non-living bow with reverence to Lady Death and respect her rightful place in their world. Just as the sun must rise in the east and set in the west, so too must all things reach their endings. At times, glorious or terrible, welcome or not, Lady Death is the gatekeeper of the necessity of transition. Deaths come in all colors, shapes, sizes, and densities. She, as their steadfast guardian, gently holds and enfolds each tender ending and readies it for its transition into new ethers. In the wake remains space for that which is still alive and for new births. Lady Death operates with great care and sacredness in her purpose. All she touches in ash and ether exhales at last. Okay, moving on. 
The next card I'll discuss is the hermit. This is a part of me as well, kind of connected, as I said before, with my introvert part. I've explored the hermit a lot because in a lot of ways, this part of me is incongruent with what society expects, being outgoing and extroverted and really social. And so I explored that with kind of the sacredness of this imagery. We have someone in prayer. There is the essence of home and the colors here feel really soft and comfortable. I'll read to you the hermit. It's insulated and warm, cozy and soft in here. Nobody requires my energy for their purposes. It's mine, all mine. Is this the true me or a retreat place? I do not know that answer and at the moment I don't really care because it feels just delicious to be in this distanced space from everyone else and their incessant needs. I have a real appreciation, almost an envy, for those fortunate creatures who carry their homes on their backs. Those turtles, snails, and crabs, lucky. They just pull themselves inward when they feel the need and nobody bats an eye. Nobody expects them to be shell-less, endlessly exposed, naked. It's as natural for me as it is for them to feel that desire to retreat, but unluckily for me, I am quite naked without a shell on my back, so I've learned to nest in other ways. Again, here you may notice that there are similarities between the hermit and the cocoon. So this is another example of how parts can overlap and work together to help you get your needs met. So for the next one, I'm going to talk about a part that is not archetypal, but I think a lot of us can relate to it. This is the contortionist. This is a part that I discovered kind of later in my life when I was juggling the balls of motherhood and career and adult life and family. And it is the part of me that bends itself into pretzels to meet other people's needs, to take care of other people. It's the part of me that gets really uncomfortable for the sake of people pleasing and making other people happy. And it's the self-abandoning part of me that focuses on others at the expense of myself. So this is a pretty literal card. You can see people actually bending themselves into pretzels. And um, I'll read you the description. I'm fairly certain I can save you. If only I can figure out the optimal way to bend myself. Shift, adapt, even unnaturally contort myself around the situation. I'll try as many outlandish, even painful positions until I find the one that works to keep you safe. It's always alarmingly amazing that they watch me put on these feats to appease them without so much as a care toward my being and my bending bones. I wonder if they would notice if I broke, when I break. I suppose I can't keep this going forever. Even I have limits. But no matter, I will contort over and over until my tendons snap and my spine crumbles to protect you from their cruel rejection. Anything to help you achieve the love you so desperately long for. Now, as the contortionist is talking to you, I will protect you. The contortionist is not talking about the people that they're bending over for. The contortionist is talking about the true self. So this is a way where our parts can protect our system by, by doing the things that we think we need to do to stay safe. The contortionist part bends over backwards for other people because it feels that that's what I need to stay safe in the world and to earn belonging and love. So you can see how these parts, as they develop, they're really distorted. We know consciously that bending over backwards for other people isn't the kind of love we want, but these parts that fractal out during childhood and throughout the difficult experiences of our lives, they do what they need to do to survive and to protect the system. And the contortionist is a really good example of that. Now for the next card, I'll talk about trust. This is another one that's not necessarily archetypal. It's more of kind of an entity or consciousness in our world than uh, something specific that you can put your finger on. But I have created it as a part because this is a place where I go. And the part of me that really has trust in the process, in the universe, in the belief that everything's going to be what it is and I will ultimately be okay, 
this is the part that I've explored here. And you can see in the imagery that I have things kind of balancing, like there's just this delicate balance and things are still just kind of okay. And there's this trust that if they fall, it will still be okay. I have the colors here that feel kind of soothing and comfortable to me. And I'll read to you the description of trust. Trust is a magical creature, not from earth. She visits us as a messenger from the stars to remind human beings that the moment we are in is only a single snapshot of the big picture. Trust has a level of patience most of us will never be able to access, for access to such an ability comes only with deep centering and wide focus. When bits of life seem to be in a delicate balancing act, just as likely to succeed as crash to smithereens, trust offers her gifts. We may or may not be able to sense when trust is near because of our human tendency toward fear, but if we can tap into trust, an experience of serenity will wash over us. Allowing ourselves to be cocooned in trust fosters a more expansive mind. From this place, we can see beyond ourselves and beyond the moment we are in. Trust lays the pathway to transcendence at our feet and gently nudges. We must choose for ourselves if we will accept her invitation. So that is trust. The next one is sort of similar in the sense that it's more of a collective experience than an archetype, but this part is called tribe. Now, this part is interesting. I've talked a bit about my introverted nature, but there's also a part of me that really adores and appreciates aligned, authentic connection. And so that's what a tribe is to me, and this part seeks out those congruent individuals and that community that can support who I am and I represent it in this card with the kind of gathering that feels consistent with the part that is tribe and I'll read the description it flows it aligns it breathes in deep unburdened inhales and exhales this easy dynamic I see you I really see you and you see me we were not born into a bond forged by blood we chose this we chose each other like selecting the most comfortable supportive shoes despite their external aesthetic. Secrets seem silly with you because the judgments of this world do not have a name here with us. Even when we don't understand, we do not judge or hate or reject. We lean in with curious open-heartedness and say, tell me more, I want to understand. There are no pressured rubber bands holding us together, forcing us to bond. We are here by choice, consciously, and with sacred commitment. Trust is taken seriously. Vulnerability is honored. Potential is vast when souls dance together like this. The next part I'll discuss is called walls. This is my definition of the part of me that creates sort of protective barriers between myself and other people who don't feel so safe. And this part has developed a long, long time ago when I was a really little girl to help keep my system safe in a larger system that was really unaccepting and judgmental and harmful to me. So you can see in my description that I've got kind of pointy cactuses, brick walls that are hard to climb over. This image, all, all of the energy of it is about resistance and keeping something away. And I will read this very last description before we close. I only know about my walls in theory when other people tell me they have banged against them or felt their unyielding resistance. Walls are like a minefield with me buried deep in the safe insides, the most armored place, a blissful space of safety requiring no effort from me, no battle, no attachments. The walls take care of any threat acting as an ultimate filter that I trust, inherently knowing that whatever, whomever, any threat true or imagined cannot reach me. Walls were built long ago by a loyal mason who felt the tremor of fear and threat in my foundation. Tirelessly and faithfully, he crafted walls as a testament of his all-seeing and gentle love. I gratefully enjoy the solitude inside walls, knowing that under my finger is the button to lower and disarm them, if only I should choose to risk exposure and, and release the sureness of safety and protection. 
So those are the 10 cards for today. And as you have seen from this stack, I have oh so many more. And um, I really would love to hear from you as you're creating yours, your imagery, your writing, how it feels for you, what you discover. Feel free to just leave some comments. And I am so grateful that you're on this creative, explorative journey with me.